from Studio K at Foxborough Cable Access. Saffron is essentially the stamen of a rose. Feeling creative? Sage has a great flavor. Is your palate needing a new challenge? Well, let's cook with Mike Damasio. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Let's Cook with Mike. I'm your host, Mike Damasio, and today I got a very special treat. Here we are in the middle of COVID, and I haven't been able to have any guests, but the one guest I am able to have is a member of my household. So I'd like to introduce my wife, Lauren Damasio. Hi, honey. Hi. All right. So Lauren has had some dietary issues a few years ago. Um, she started not feeling well. Why don't you tell us what went on? Well, initially, um, speaking with my hairdresser, I had like a itchy scalp and I couldn't figure out what the problem was. I tried very, various dandruff shampoos and my um, hairdresser told me that she thinks it was something related to gluten because her brother had the same thing. He had uh, a gluten issue. So that started off, you know, my thought process. And then I still had some dietary issues and bloating and just felt uncomfortable and run down. And when my girlfriend said, you know what? A friend of mine, a coworker, has the same issues, and why don't you just try going gluten-free and see what happens? So I did, and within a week, a lot of my issues subsided. Amazing. So as that's the miracle of food, there's a lot of ways of uh, that, that food really helps in your overall being. And so with that, we had to change our way of eating at home. We had to change our, our diets. Uh, so Lauren and I have basically gone to a pescatarian diet. Uh, Lauren's mainly vegan, vegetarian. I sneak the meat every once in a while. But uh, mainly at home, we're cooking uh, gluten-free, uh, lactose-free, and vegan and vegetarian. So today, with Lauren here, we're going to do a great uh, Mexican meal. But it's all v vegan, it's lactose-free, and it's glu uh, gluten-free. So what we're going to make today is we have some, we're going to do a cauliflower burrito. The cauliflower will take the place of the ground beef or chicken, whatever you would have in your burrito. We're going to make it taste so delicious you won't even know there's a vegetable in there. We're going to do some Spanish rice, delicious. We're going to make some vegan refried beans with our pinto beans here. And we're going to make a guacamole, and we're going to make a pico de gallo. So we have a lot of things to do. As you can see, we have a lot of ingredients here. So if you want to get started on cutting up some tomatoes, because there's tomatoes in almost all of our dishes today, and I'll start working on getting the rice and the vegan refried beans going. You ready to go? Absolutely. Let's cook. All right. So you can start with those tomatoes, getting nice thick slices. And I will start on my rice and vegan refried beans. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, excuse me honey, I'm going to take some of this oil, I'm going to make my beans in this, and I'm going to make my rice in this. So with both of these, they require some onions, garlic, and the rice has pepper in it as well. So I'm gonna work here on the onions and get our rice and beans cranking. So Lauren, you used to be a great eater. You used to be able to eat everything and anything. In fact, Lauren's the one who really is, even though I was a chef in cooking, uh, when, we were, when we met, I, my diet was very restricted to Pasta and meat, would you say? Yes, you, I called you my little meatball. Yes, I was you her loved. little meatball. <laughs> That's all I would eat. Primarily I was very, very Italian. plain. Yeah, very plain, very Italian. And I introduce you to Thai food, lobster, a couple of my favorite cuisines. Yep. So what would you say is your favorite cuisine right now? Uh, it's definitely Thai food. Definitely Thai food. And I know you like it very spicy. I like it very spicy. All right. So we'll add some onions in there. Get some nice garlic cloves. I'm going to do two cloves in each dish here. Just going to nip off these little ends. And Lauren, you've also been around the world. You've been to Australia, Italy, France, the Caribbean, any of those places 
the food, anything that you had in those places that really stick out? Oh, uh, Italy was fantastic. I went with my mother um, while we were engaged. Um, my mother and I took a trip, a 10-day trip, four days in um, Paris, and then we did the rest a tour of Italy, and the Italian food was just amazing. So fresh, so incredible. There are several buffets that we end up going to, and my mother kept saying to me, Lauren, where are you putting this food? You just kept, <laughs> I kept making more and more passes through the buffet line because I couldn't get enough. It was so delicious. Yeah, they say the food there is just so fresh. You know, we, the United States, we, we get all excited about these farm-to-table type places, but pretty much in Europe, that's all everything is, is farm-to-table. Everything's so fresh. It's okay. So I'm going to be adding the pepper now to just the uh, the Spanish rice. One more tomato, or yeah, why don't you do enough? one more tomato? All of our dishes have tomato in it today: the refried beans, the rice, the pico. And our guacamole. You put a little tomato in your guacamole? I do. Yes, you do. Sometimes I've used uh, pomegranate seeds. Yeah, delicious. Great, great substitution. All right. So we are cooking right along here. I've got to blow up my supplies. All right, so that's my beans. This is my rice. Now we just want to cook these just enough to get them a little translucent. So they're nice and soft. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take my pinto beans, sorry honey, I'm going to take my pinto beans here, get them into the fire. I'm also going to add my seasonings at this point. So you're going to see a lot of uh, similar spices and herbs with all these meals because it is a Mexican dish. So we're going to do a little chili powder. A little bit of cumin, a little extra cumin, and more, a little more than the chili powder, and oregano. Should I start to do the avocado? Sure, I'm going to start taking some of your tomatoes. <coughs> and that's some nice dried oregano. I'm going to take some of your tomatoes now, right. juice included. I'm going to take some of that juice first, delicious. And about a three-quarter of a cup of diced tomatoes. And now Lauren's going to start on the avocado. You show them the funky way of opening. Uh, well. You score right down the middle all the way around. I did, but it's a little. It's a tough. It's a tough. Tough <laughs> avocado today. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to toss all these flavors in. Would you mind passing the salt and pepper? Oh, thank y'all. You got some. Nice fresh cracked black pepper, some salt, it's very little. And now with this we're just going to stew the, stew the beans, this is some veggie broth. I don't put too much, we just want to get it enough and I'm going to turn up the heat here. We want this to sear quite a bit. Now I'm going to add my rice in, in our rice mixture. Get that in there. I got it perfectly measured out here. So we need two cups of liquid in our rice. One with the veggie broth. And the rest with my handy dandy Foxborough cable access television coffee cup. Tremendous. So if you want to help so what me with the avocado, here? it's sure. a little hard. Oh, I'm gonna dice little challenge. Up. Oh yeah, look at this little sucker, huh? There we go. So right now we have the rice are going, the beans are going. We're gonna get those beans nice and soft. We're gonna end up putting them in our uh, food processor here, the Ninja. I bring that every once in a while to our show. Great tool, I use it quite a bit at home. 
So since our, uh, our avocado isn't really cooperating well today, but what we're going to do is you can make it like a uh, diced avocado. Sure. You know, diced guacamole rather than a mash. But I'll get all this avocado out of here. <laughs> it's fighting. It's fighting. So what you're going to find here is, uh, you know, Lauren was very concerned. When she first went to this diet, it was very upsetting because, as she's been saying and we, I've been saying, she was a great eater. I mean, she would, she would eat, try everything. Uh, there was nothing that intimidated her. She loved all the different flavors. And it was really uh, difficult to hear that, you know, sh what she thought was going to be a very restrictive diet. Uh, fortunately, not to pat myself on the back, but I was able to kind of squelch a lot of those uh, concerns she had. You rose to the challenge. I rose to the challenge. And we have great meals. I mean, a lot of fun food, a lot of things that we try uh, that would be a, you know, you wouldn't think of it as a vegetarian meal, and I'm able to turn it and make it that way. What are some of the fun things I've made for you recently? Oh, my goodness. Well, being the pescatarian really helps because... If we had the seafood out of the picture, that'd be a little more Yeah, you make a great salmon dish that I love with um, maple syrup and, and soy. soy. That was delicious. Mm -hmm. um, oh, we just recently made some uh, vegan meatballs. Yep, the vegan meatballs were delicious. Yep, with um, walnuts and lentils. lentils and what else was in there? Walnuts, lentils. It was very delicious. It was delicious. Who'd have thunk? I know. I'm just going to get the cover for our rice so we can give a little cover on that. Oh, goodness. So also I discovered that I was lactose intolerant when I was talking with my aunt, my Aunt Bobby. Um, Michael and I had gone away for a weekend, and I tried a gluten-free... Um, it was a seafood chowder, and I went back to the hotel, and I was still having some issues. Um, my stomach was bloating. I didn't feel well, and um, lo and behold, I talked to her in the middle of the week, and she told me that she was lactose intolerant, and then I made the connection, because a lot of times when you're gluten-free or gluten-sensitive, you're also lactose intolerant. Mm -hmm. So that's when we made that switch. All right. So now we're going to come to our cauliflower, the main part of the dish, which is the burrito. So this is going to be made just like if you had ground beef or chicken or whatever you want. You want some red onion in your sure. guacamole? Delicious. Uh, you know, whatever you would make your burrito. We're just going to substitute the cauliflower. I'm going to chop this up. You got a nice beautiful head of cauliflower here. We're going to chop it up. I hope I didn't uh, knock the boys in the booths off their seats saying we're doing a vegan meal today because... <laughs> I know they like to eat what we make here, but they won't even know the difference. We won't tell them it's vegan. Keep it a little secret, our own little secret. All right. So I'm just gonna chop this up into small pieces, almost like, you know, to ground beef consistency. Can I take a pinch of your cilantro? For you may, yeah, absolutely. You got your lime juice there as well. Thank you. So we're going to start this baby here. Yeah. Still figuring out how to learn my new equipment that the studio has so graciously purchased for me. It's only my second or third time using this here. Yep. All right, so once again, I'm going to heat up my pan here with some oil. We're going to get the cauliflower in there first. We're also going to add pepper and onion strips. So it's, you know, again, uh, oh, I also have jalapenos for you, too. Okay. So we're going to get this stuff in here. Now, Mexican's one of our go-to cuisines at the house because it's fun. We like eating fun food. And Mexican always seems to have fun food. We like tacos. We do burritos. Nachos. Nachos. We love we love guacamole. Avocado is one of our favorite things in the house. It's a staple in our house. Um, I have avocado toast for lunch two, three times a week. Yep. It's very healthy for you. You hear me breathing in the microphone. All right. So we're going to saute all this up.
Now for, for this part of the dish, I'm gonna use strips for my peppers and strips for the onion as well. Just gives a little better look. I'm gonna clean out some of this stuff. Don't need that. So I'm just gonna, nice, that looks like a great uh, guacamole there, honey. Thank you. Maybe it just needs a pinch of salt and pepper. Sure. And when you're ready. Mm -hmm. All right. Separate these strips. Delicious. The beans are looking great. Rice is coming along. That's gonna. Those are gonna be our uh, wait fors. Some pepper. Do you want? Would you like some just cumin? That? Or no, just a pinch of salt, I think. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Very nice. All right, now just the onions in this pan. It's getting hot. Good. Wasn't sure the pan was getting hot. Do you need me to... Want to chop up some of that cilantro? Yes. Has the... As the show goes on, the space starts to clear and things start to happen. Oh, and then we're gonna make our pico. If you can even start making the pico, you're good at that. We'll get you another bowl. So that'll just, excuse me, that'll just be tomatoes, red onion, jalapenos, scallion. All right, so let's finish up with my cauliflower dish here. So again, you're gonna find that, you know, it, it's it's gonna be amazing how this is gonna taste like you're eating ground beef or ground chicken for the day. And crank that up. We're gonna again, we're gonna add some of these similar spices. We got the cumin, which is a staple in Latin American country cooking. Chili powder. Excellent. So where's our next trip gonna be, honey? Where are we gonna go eat? Italy. Italy, back to Italy. Yep. The motherland. You've never been. Never been. Can't wait to go. What's something that you haven't tried that you would love to try? Anything out there that you can think of? <laughs> a vegetable? A vegetable. That I haven't tried? Yeah. I don't know. Well, how about some of the things? What are some of the things we. Oh, you actually bought it. So, again, for substitutes of meat, uh, we use jackfruit in some of our cooking. Oh. It's good for a substitute for a pulled pork or pulled beef. Uh, what other things we use? Oh, we use a lot of mushrooms. We like yes. the uh, portobello oh. mushrooms, the very meaty mushrooms. Doing this in here too? Mm -hmm. Good. You put down how many you want. And a little bit of cilantro is going in there too? Yep, cilantro is going in there and tomato. Yep, you'll probably use most of that tomato. I'm going to put, so while this is going, that's going very nicely. I'm going to put some of the tomato in here into our rice mixture. Rice is coming along nicely, beautiful. All the colors, you got the white onion, red pepper, red tomato, makes everything pop. Get a, get a little seasoning in here. Same thing, this one won't be as seasoned with the cumin and the chili powder, but again, similar spices, just not as much. The rice actually helps lessen any of the flavors by being a little bit bland, but brings out kind of at, uh, balances it all out, I should say. Some salt, some pepper. Do you want fresh garlic in this? Yes, please. Pico? Would you like some fresh garlic? Yes, please. All right. It smells delicious. Yeah, it doesn't. I always say in my show, I wish they had some smell-o-vision. So at home you could see what all this is turning <laughs> out to be like as we go through the steps here. 
I'm just tasting up some of the garlic for our delicious pico. Some lime juice in there. Honey, you did it faster than I thought you could do it. I'm amazing. You are amazing. <laughs> Here you go. A little bit in there. Boop, boop. Beep, pop, boop. We got dinner. All right. So our beans here are looking really good. Now you could take dry beans, pinto beans, soak them overnight. Uh, you know, and then you got to stew them here a little longer than you do the canned. I use canned pinto beans. They just cook up a lot faster. We're going to end up putting that uh, majority of it. We're not going to put all of it, but we're going to put the majority of the bean into the food processor. And then we're going to incorporate it back into the pan and cook it up again. And it's going to be a... You don't want it to be completely smooth. So that's why we're going to put about probably three quarters of this into the food processor, blend it up nice, and then add it back with the rest of that's chunky so you still get a little bit of texture while you're eating your beans. A little scallion in the pico? Sure. That sounds like a great thing. All right. And a little surprise. A little so, uh, sugar in the pico. I have a lime here. Fresh lime, lime juice. I'm just going to use some fresh lime juice in here in our cauliflower mixture. What I'm going to do now is now that the vegetables in my in my cauliflower mix here are getting again translucent. They're starting to soften and become clear. I'm going to add a little bit of water because again what we're trying to accomplish is to get this cauliflower to be tender. We don't want it really crunchy. We want it to be tender like you would a um, like you would the ground beef. Would you mind just filling that up with a little bit of water? Thank you. Okay. I'm going to add this little bit of cilantro to our mix. Now this water is just going to steam the cauliflower, it's going to have, help soften it so that it becomes, again, the consistency of the ground beef, which is what we're looking for, and that's going to be just great. If you want to take apart that, I'm going to pour some of this in here, and then you can puree that up to, for me. Yeah, thank you. That button. Yep. Slippery. <laughs> the gloves. The gloves. Someday, like the masks, maybe we won't need gloves anymore. All right. Let's put that back on. Let's give that a few pulses. Beautiful. All done? Yeah, great. Add this back to the pan. Again, like all my shows, no cuts, everything's done. We're gonna have a meal here for four to six people. We're gonna do it in under 30, 40 minutes. And you're gonna be amazed when we're all done that, you know, you two at home, very easy to come up with these delicious meals in short time. Mix, you know, when people get home, your family gets home, they think you put a lot of time and effort into it. And it is, there's a lot of time and effort, but it's very quick, very simple, and in the end, very delicious. And most of it is stuff you have already around the house. I'm not bringing in anything unusual or rare that you might not find in an everyday kitchen. Everything's pretty basic. The spices, the cumin and chili powder should be in everybody's house, salt, pepper, you know, the tomatoes, onions, peppers, vegetables, cauliflower. It's all stuff you should have in your kitchen. So again, we're still working here. The cauliflower is looking good. Still want to get it a little softer. All right, we're going to do something fun here with our tomatillos. Why don't you do our tomatillos as well, honey? Honey, I've never really worked with them. Why don't you tell me what I need to do? All right. So we're going to peel the husk off. Yeah, I'll take one, you take one. How's that? So this is going to be kind of our side vegetable for the dish for today. 
see if I can get this thing working here. Oh, are they supposed to be a little can... soft when you choose them at the supermarket? Uh, actually, these are better a little firm. So these are uh, these are all right. These aren't too bad. They're maybe a little softer than I want, but I try to choose the hardest ones that they had there. Okay. Husk can be a little sticky here. It is a little sticky. In some spots. And basically all we're going to do, if I can get this piece on, which I'm, not, I'm failing at. So what I'm going to do is my beans are just about done. So I'm going to take my beans off. I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to sear. And that's going to get nice and hot right here. And what we're going to do is just going to put some grill marks on our tomatillos. It's a little salt and pepper, very simple, nice basic meal. We're just going to cut that here, cut the top off. Again, we'll make nice sticks about, you know, that thick. Quarter inch? Yeah, about quarter inch. Good, good what measure is. Maybe only get three or four slices out of it, that's okay. Excellent. Nice job. Look at your knife skills. Who taught you? Just put a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. This is going to be nice and basic. Nothing fancy here. I'm going to put a little oil in this little oil in the cap here and I'm just going to go and paint each of these. Oh, I flipped it over. Is this the mess you talk about when I'm at home? <laughs> yes, because I'm on the cleanup committee. You're like the Tasmanian devil. In Truth the, be uh... told, honey, <laughs> with, Deb not, with Deb not here today, that's why I brought you, so you can clean up afterwards. <laughs> mm -hmm. Producer Deb taking the day off, well deserved, well earned. We're just going to put some grill marks on that. That'll take a few minutes. Our cauliflower mixture is looking great. Uh-oh. I did it. There we go. Let's see how it's getting. Nice and tender. And try a piece. And try a piece. Mm -hmm. A little hot. You see Careful. it's at nine. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's getting to that tender point that we're looking for. We've got the onions and peppers in here. Everything's looking great. Let's check on our rice. Want to lift that lid for me? Careful the steam. Oh yeah, rice is coming out great. Nice having two people here in Studio K once again in downtown beautiful Foxborough. Cooking up a storm. Mmm about ready. It's all coming together like every show. Looks like a mess. Turns out to be a masterpiece. All right. So I'm now going to pull the rice off because that's just about done. Put that, uh, we'll put the rice over there and I'm going to get the this pan. So we've got our tortillas here for our burritos. You want to hold that for one second? Yes. Take the rice. Put this on. Put it to here. And put that on there. Hit start. All right, that's just going to heat up. So I got two different uh, tortillas here today. I have regular wheat tortillas, and I have a gluten-free tortilla for my lovely wife. So what we're going to do with those first off is I got some cheese. So again, L Lauren is lactose intolerant not dairy free so we are able to have regular cheese and cabot cheese is probably the only one right the cabot cheddar i think is the only cheese out there that is a lactose cheese lactose free cheese so we're able to enjoy that at home so i'm just going to make some shreds so that when we get our tortillas nice and hot it's going to be fantastic Melt some cheese in there. That's nice and hot. We'll start with yours first, honey, all right? Mm -hmm. Get that. We're just going to let that heat up, make it more uh, workable, soften it up a little bit so it doesn't crack or break. Let me start to clear out some space here. Look at that cauliflower. Looking great. And here is our nice you have that fork? Right here. Oh, thank you. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, we got some 
A little bit of color on our tomatillos. Again, we're working within the constraints of our lovely Studio K here, but you know what? We always get the job done. You need to flip this. Nice. It's heating up nice. Cheese. Put the cheese. Get that melted. Oh, you know what we need is our Tongs. finishing plates. As I reach back into the, the depths of Studio K cabinetry. All right, you know what you can do? You can, how about clear out your uh, cutting board area there? Bring this back to the sink, and that way I can start to have some staging area. So we're going to do some garnish with our scallion at the end. So I'm going to chop up just a little bit of our scallion. Put it off to the side. Some cilantro. Off to the side. I like rough chopping the cilantro. I don't like getting it too, too small. See, I like the flavor. A lot of people don't like the flavor. You know, when I worked at one of the schools, uh, a few of the heads of the school didn't like the cilantro. Eh? So we couldn't put cilantro in a lot of our Mexican dishes, which is a sin. But I would like to give a shout out to Woodstock Academy, the school I'm working at right now. They recently discovered that I had a TV show and uh, the school is all over it. I think they're going to put me on their website and and make me part of their uh, community and you know show the community that they have an actual chef running their food service department. So I think that's pretty exciting. So we're gonna start, start making, here we go. So we got the burrito, put a little bit of uh, guacamole. Do a little bit of our pico. A little bit of our filling. Here we go, some of the cauliflower filling. Delicious. Would you like some of your dairy-free sure. sour you. cream in there? Very nice. I'm going to roll it. I'm going to put it aside and then I'm going to make mine and then we're going to sear them at the end because they make nice little packages. Oh, crispy. All right, let's get mine on there. I can turn these off. All right, we can start to plate the rest of our meal here as we wait for my, uh, my tortilla to toast. So, we both get a little bit of this. This is where it all comes together. I can go back there. All right. Some of our rice, which is perfect. This is harder than I hoped. I got it. <laughs> a little bit of rice. Thank you. The cheese. Fry green tomatoes. Pretty good. Oh yeah, look at that. All right. Now I'm gonna do the same with this. Fill it up with all the goodies. A little bit of guacamole, a little bit of pico, cauliflower filling, roll her up. And what I like to do here is I like to put a little sear on it 
just to top, just to uh, seal the ends so that it's a, so that they uh, stays nice and closed. The gluten free one got a little little cooked. Uh oh, we're making noise here. Stop the beeping. All right. So I'm gonna take Lauren's. I'm gonna take mine. A little sear. Make it look pretty. Scallions. Cilantro. A dollop to pop. This is the tough part because I always make a mess. Try to display these things properly. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, first show with my wife complete. You're going to want to come back? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she said yes. All right, so here we have it. We have our cauliflower, burritos, refried beans, Spanish rice, grilled fried green tomatillos. Lots of deliciousness. Completely gluten-free, this one. This one, not so much. Dairy-free or lactose-free, I should say. And vegan. All in one dish. We did it. Nice job, honey. Nice job, honey. Thanks for coming today. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining us on Let's Cook with Mike. I'm your host, Mike Damasio. We'll see you next time. <laughs>